Hi everyone. Um, in this video I'm going to talk to you about documentation. And documentation is just a fancy word that we use for giving credit in academic writing. The thing that you need to uh, remember that I think is the biggest difference between sort of high school writing and college writing is that in college you have to make sure to document not only when you quote someone word for word but you have to also document when you borrow someone's ideas. So that's a little different. When I was in high school, we just had to give credit for, for word for word um, ideas. Or even if we put someone in, someone's ideas into our own words, we paraphrased. We knew we had to um, give credit. Here, you have to give credit for even someone's ideas, their frameworks, their theories, that sort of thing. So um, you need to think about that as part of your responsibility as an academic writer. So um, documentation is just this fancy word we use for that, for the system of giving credit. And we use documentation in college, and I, I need you to know that this is very serious. You just have to think about it. College professors, what do they do? They research and write. So for them, this process is really important because it's sort of the way that college professors or researchers anywhere get credit for everything that they do. So they take this system really seriously. They take documentation really seriously. So as you're going through college, you want to pay attention to this because um, it's something that, that you might not in your regular life, most regular readers don't even think about this, but this is something that college professors um, and academic people really do focus on. So. We use documentation for three main reasons. The first is to build the credibility in our papers. We're writing as introductory, basic beginner college students. So we don't have any authority yet. We don't have credentials yet. And for our readers to believe us, we need to bring in experts. Like if you were, uh, you know, re recommending to someone that you knew that they eat a particular food. Someone might say, oh yeah, well, what do you know? You know, you eat that horrible food. But when you bring in a nutritionist as an expert, people pay more attention. So we use experts to build up the credibility of our claims, even if we are, it was already our claim. We already thought of it ourselves. We knew you should eat carrots. But we don't yet have the credential to make that recommendation formally. So we go ahead and we cite an expert to, um, to prove our claim. The second reason that we do this is because we want to leave a trail in our research. Now you might think that's ridiculous. I'm writing about carrots. Who needs to know more about carrots? But the whole system of knowledge uh, in the world relies on this record keeping so that when people perform experiments or conduct research and something goes awry, they can sort of trace back and figure out where it went wrong. Or if someone uh, mentions maybe um, some piece of data or an idea about Alzheimer's in one paper and they're looking for the cure, they can go back and follow that research trail. So we leave, um, we document, we we leave a record of our sources so that people can pick up the trail whenever needed. And finally, most important in our, um, especially in the academic realm, is to avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism is very serious in college, as I mentioned before, and now it's pretty high stakes because we use plagiarism detectors. Every student's paper goes through a detector that's compared to the entire internet to a massive library of books, to um, databases of information, and to a, a massive database of all student writing in the entire country. And so, um, you know, we get flags. I get flags sometimes, students. You know, maybe they have a cousin who's at the University of Nebraska who wrote a paper and sends it to them to turn in, and then it is put in, turn it in, to, um, and it comes up as a match even sections of it. There are whole reports that are generated. So 
just don't plagiarize and and the way to the biggest thing is give credit to your sources and you won't have to worry about that so when we talk about this idea of documentation giving credit we do this in um, there are three different documentation styles or actually there are many documentation styles but the most common ones that we use at four C's are APA MLA and Chicago or Turabian now these different styles are really they're just like different brands you know sort of like coke and pepsi and rc cola they're all just different brands that do the same basic things and um, there are three parts to each of these three different recipes um, the first is how you give credit to a source within your paper they call that the in-text citation so in text means within the text of the paper and each of the different brands of documentation has a different way of giving text in the paper the second part of documentation is the bibliography the bibliography is the full publication information that you add at the end of your paper I know you've all written bibliography so you know what I'm talking about each brand has a different way they want that information structured so they want it formatted in a specific way they want things in specific orders like dates of publication names of publication all that sort of thing so you're gonna be using the appropriate style for the you know brand that you're using you're gonna you're gonna make sure that you your bibliographies are formatted correctly and finally the third part of documentation or academic style is the formatting of the paper itself so in APA for example there is a cover sheet in MLA there isn't there's a heading so I'm going to show you right now the um, different three different styles that I've just mentioned I'm going to show you sample papers so in most high schools you're taught MLA which is modern language association and MLA is commonly used in the humanities um, and that's why you you're taught it because you're usually taught by your English teachers so you'll see that in MLA the heading is right on the first page of the essay and uh, it's a very brief heading the last name of the uh, of the student author is here in the upper right corner along with the page number the title is right here the font is the same throughout it's all uh, no bold or anything special and then um, the last page of the paper is the on a separate page if I can get to it here is the works cited page that's the name and you'll see that you know it's still got the hanging indent format it starts out here and then the second lines and following lines in each entry are indented so that's what the bibliography looks like in MLA and then the other thing is that in the uh, in-text citations in MLA are um, they are parentheses so you put parentheses wherever you've borrowed the information and in MLA it's the author's last name space and the page number so that is different you'll see from APA now this is an APA paper and this will be familiar to you because this is what we use in our uh, in our class you guys use the template for this so you know there's a cover page here and there is the title in bold at the top and the thing that I want to point out to you because you've already done an APA as far as formatting goes is we're going to be adding this week in-text citations so we're going to be giving credit within the paper in the in-text citation and in APA we use the author's name when available and then the year of publication so it's the authors comma and the year of publication so APA is the reason we're using APA in our um, course is because for many people most more disciplines use APA because it features the date 
and the date of the information is very important in most disciplines. Not in MLA, the one that you learn, the humanities, because the dates of poetry or literature or music aren't that critical. But in APA, where we're talking about things like um, medical breakthroughs or studies that are conducted, the dates matter a lot. So that's why we use, um, we're going to be using APA. And uh, the good news is we're going to be using a tool to help us. So you can see these are all examples of in-text citations here. And then um, you can see at the end here the reference page, which you guys have already made. Uh, we haven't made, but we will be making one this week. So the, it's called references. You noticed in MLA it was called um, it was called works cited. These are just bibliographies, but they do each have different names and slightly different formatting. And finally, this is a Chicago style paper, and this is very commonly used Chicago style in the humanity. In excuse me, in history. So you'll often be asked to use this if you're in a history class here. <coughs> Sorry. Um, one of the things that's really different about Chicago style, probably the biggest difference, is it uses footnotes. And so this is a little tricky if you're using, technically tricky, Word will help you make footnotes. So, um, and there, uh, the Writing Center can help you and your history teacher should help you. you there is a separate cover page in a um, Chicago style paper as well and there is a, um, a bibliography and in uh, Chicago style the bibliography is called bibliography. So that's just a quick peek. Uh, one other thing I wanted to be sure to tell you right now is that you don't want to use Word for your APA um, documentation because it doesn't do it correctly. So, all right, I'm going to return to our handout. So, um, one of the things um, that you might be wondering is, well, when do I document? And we'll be going over this during the semester, but um, whenever, obviously, for direct quotes, as we mentioned. And so that's when you copy someone's exact words when you paraphrase, which is when you put their words into your own words, you still have to give the same credit. So it's the same process whether you're using the author's words or you're using your own words. So you might say, well, why don't I just use the author's words all the time? Well, one reason is because the author's words um, might not flow well with your words. So it might be awkward or you might have a, a quotation that says what you want but it's just phrased in a different way or, or excerpting it out of the paper just doesn't work. It doesn't combine well with your own words. So that's one of the reasons that you would paraphrase. The other reason is, and this is important to remember, words in direct quotes don't count towards the length of your paper. So you can't just sort of quote someone else's writing and build your whole paper from that. You have to use your own words and then anything in direct quotes sort of is, uh, you know, doesn't count. So uh, you use it, but it isn't going to be counted as your word count. And finally, facts and data, you're always going to be giving, uh, if it's not common knowledge, Right, so common knowledge, you don't have to quote that there are, you know, eight planets in the solar system or, you know, that uh, th who the president of the United States is. Things that are widely known, you don't have to, um, you don't have to quote. Uh, you also do have to quote information that you take from charts or, or illustrations or graphics or tables even if you're not quoting them, that would be like paraphrasing. So you would still give credits for those things. And um, on the handout, you can look. There are some basic uh, examples that um, uh, just so that you can, and we're going to go over this, as I mentioned. We're going to be documenting all semester. The Here are my tips for you for um, being successful at documenting. These are, you know, the, I've learned these the hard way. First of all, use Noodle tools. 
Noodle Tools is the free software program you get a subscription to. Our librarians found that it was the very best one that's available, the most accurate. Once you learn to use this, documenting is a breeze. It is really takes the stress out of documentation. Second, document as you go. You do not want to leave this till the end because often if you don't document this is what I used to do I used to wait to do the documentation until I was done with the paper and then I could never I, I'm digging back to try to through articles trying to figure out where I got the quote it takes a lot longer it's stressful it's confusing and it really leaves you open for plagiarism because if you don't get that documentation right like I said before it's high stakes now so, you know, you can accidentally, you know, forget to give credit and you might say, well, my teacher's not going to know. No, your teacher might not know, but turn it in will know and it will flag it and give your teacher a report. So you've it, the best thing that you can do is document as you go. And this last point, understand that your work is checked for plagiarism. So I know that your new um learners, new academic writers. So you're going to make mistakes with this, but the first thing that I want to see is that you're, I always say, say that all of us, myself included, are doing our due diligence. That means we understand that we're professionals now. You're professionals. You're in training to be professional individuals in the world, educated people. So everyone looks to you to do the right thing. And the right thing is to try your best. You might not get this perfectly from the beginning, but I'm going to know that you're trying. It's not going to bother me if your punctuation's a little off or there's some other small problem in the beginning because I know you're new learners. But I also know that you have these free tools available. So we expect you to, you know, in this process, you're becoming this educated person. This is one of the ways that you'll, that will be reflected. This is a behavior of educated people, documenting our sources, giving credit.